Hello, welcome back. Uh, welcome to Writing with Dev number 28 and this is my eighth in my series of 10 top 10s about writing and today's top 10 is top 10 mistakes writers make. Number 10. They make their characters either too good or too, too bad. We need light and shade, okay? They need to be rounded characters. They need to have strengths and flaws. Make your angels more demonic and your demons more angelic. Number nine, this is a mistake that writers always make. They underestimate the reader. Don't. Your readers smart, make them work. Show, don't tell. If you're just gonna explain everything and give them no room for their own imagination or their own thought process, they're not gonna hook into your plot, all your narratives, all your stories. Your reader is smart. Whatever you do, don't underestimate them. Let them fill in the gaps. They will enjoy it more if they are active in the reading of this story and they can have different perspectives on it too. The way you write your story may not be the way that it lands with other people and that's a really amazing thing when people will say, oh, I thought it was about this. It's like, well, actually I wrote it about that. Let them, let your characters and your plot and your readers have some room to breathe. Dan Savage is a really famous um, sex podcaster. He talks about dirty talk. This is how you do it. Tell them what you're gonna do, tell them what you're doing, and tell them what you did. I think the opposite with writing. Don't tell them what you're gonna do, don't tell them what you're doing, and don't tell them what you did. Number eight. <sighs> okay, writers, you do this all the time. You judge your writing too harshly, way too harshly. You are so used to your own writing because you're kind of in it. So you're not a great person to be the judge, the reviewer of this work. Don't focus on the project. Applaud yourself for doing something, not for how good or bad you think something is. Writers are so harsh about their own writing. Chances are it's just the, the start of it and it's gonna be shit anyway. And even the greatest piece of writing you ever read or the greatest screenplay you ever saw or the greatest audio book you ever listened to probably started as shit, if not shitter than this. You just keep getting the scum off the top of the soup. You're getting the peel off the potato. You need to not judge yourself so harshly, be kind to yourself, encourage yourself in the way that you would encourage someone else, someone who was starting out and someone that you love. You have to be your own cheer squad. So just stop being the nitpicker, stop finding the spider in the bunch of flowers. Just say, good on you, well done. Because if this isn't great, it might be great after a bit of work, or it might end up in the bin, but it might be the thing that you wrote in order to get to that great place that your character, your plot, your story, or your writing wants to be. Number seven mistake that writers make is they want the lollies all at the start of the trip. People will just say, I want to know about my, how do I know about my characters and my plot and my story and how will I know? How will I know if it's any good? How will I know if it gets published? How will I know how I'll feel? How do I know how I'll, if I'll get, how I'll get through the hearts? That is not how writing or life goes. Writing and perhaps the world is like this big vending machine which is painted black and you can't see in it. You can't see in it at all. The only way you can get out that packet of twisties which is eight items back or that cherry ripe, which is right at the back of B7. The only way you can get those things out is by putting in tokens of time to the machine and everything will come out eventually and it will all be what you need or want, but it won't be in the order that you expect or you think that it should be, but it will all add up, I promise. You just have to keep working and don't expect all the lollies at the start of the trip. It'll come, it'll come. Just be patient, be slow, and just know that at the end of the day, you'll get everything, but, it, but the transactions don't necessarily add up. 10 minutes work might give you a huge rush of inspiration and clarity and insight into what you're doing. And another time, it could be 10 hours and you come out the other end feeling like you've been in a washing machine and you've achieved nothing. That's normal. That's normal. Just keep going. It'll all get finished in the end and you'll move on to the next thing. And whether it's good or bad, no one will really know. And even if you think it's good at that time, you might actually look back on it and think it's a bit crap. 
It's about the doing. Number six mistake that people make. This is a quote by a guy called Justin McLaughlin, who I don't know. I Googled it because I heard it around quite a bit and I wonder where it was from. Don't do them at the same time. If you do it at the same time, you're blocking the flow of the ideas because you're going back and tinkering with it before it's ready. The very best thing that you can do is go for quantity and that's where you'll find your quality. Don't try to polish it up and clean it up along the way. A lot of people get really stuck that way. I had a guy come to my Sydney Gunners once. He said, I've been writing a book for 17 years. And I said, well, how's that going? He said, not too good. I haven't been able to get past the first chapter. He just kept nitpicking and nitpicking over and over and over again. 80% done is done. Just, just keep moving ahead and you get back to the editing, but not while you're in the crux of getting everything down. Procrastor editing is one of the most common ways of blocking yourself. There's a great quote, sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to stop participating it. So get out of your way. Number five, really common mistake that writers make. They want a cheer squad, don't they? They want external validation. They want gold stars. They want mummy to put their picture up on the fridge. No, go back to what I've said before. Action speaks louder than coffee chats. In order to write, you need to build up a head of steam. Talking about it dissipates that head of steam. It's like losing your appetite. If you're a person who loves ideas and writing and information and narrative and conversation, if you have ways of doing that through social media or talking with other people, you'll probably do that. We all do and that's fine. But one of the things that you can do is try to limit or entirely stop that altogether. So instead of dissipating all of those ideas and energy and information with social media, other people, random comment threads, whatever it is, that instead of putting it all out there, feed it back into yourself, feed it back into your own writing. I can promise you, if you were stuck in a house and all you have was a laptop with no internet connection, knowing that you had to write that thing that you had to write, that's what you'd end up doing because you love the communion with words. And if you don't have anyone to do it with, if you don't have anyone to bounce back with, you'll just do it with yourself. Number four kind of leads on, they procrastinate it. They procrastinate research and they procrastinate workshop. Stop that kind of procrastination. That kind of procrastination is the worst. There's one thing about procrastinate drinking or procrastinate tidying or procrastinate baking or procrastinate dog walking or procrastinate knitting or procrastinate mowing the lawn. The thing with procrastinate researching and writing and editing, it actually makes you feel like you are doing that thing that you need to do, but you're not but it's so close to that. It's like, oh, I just need to do this research. I just need to do this edit. You don't, you just need to get words on the page. Number three common mistake writers make is they give up what they really want for what they want now. People will say they want to write a book. They'll say that they want to publish a book. They'll say that they want the feeling of completing a book and getting these people out of their head and onto the page and feeling proud of what they do. That's what they really want, but they give it up for what they just, what now? Which is procrastination and mucking around. Identify the things you use to distract yourself with and procrastinate with and use those as rewards. On people's deathbeds, they don't regret the risks that they took that didn't work out, they regret the risks that they didn't take. There's always something that you can be doing other than writing. Oh, they're cheap hits, they're cheap thrills. You know, pack the dishwasher and boom, it's done. Walk the dog, you know, hang the leash back, it's done. Respond to that email, it's done. Writing's not like that. Writing, there's no guarantee. There's a lot of the time that it's unsatisfying. I can't guarantee you that you're gonna feel better after you've done that writing session, but I can tell you that you'll feel better about yourself. There's one thing about reveal preferences, what people actually do, and there's another thing entirely about what people tell you that they love doing. I love doing this thing. It's like, well, you hardly do it. So how about you do some writing and you don't tell anyone and see how you feel or feel how you feel. Number two really common mistake that writers make is they're just too impatient and they think that it happens too fast. They think that writing happens in a linear, smooth, expected way like this train journey will take 37 minutes and it will stop at this station and this station and this station. And this. It's just not like that. Just sit down and do it. And if you are getting impatient, just remember this, no matter how slow you're going, 
you're lapping everyone on the couch. So if it helps for you, think about other people who are lying on the couch and you're doing laps around them. If there's somebody that you want to prove that you can get this writing done or that you can be a better writer than them, that's fine. But for me, when I think, no matter how slow you're going, you're lapping everyone on the couch, I'm thinking about myself on the couch. I'm thinking about the other version of me that would just like to be, you know, futzing on the internet, just kind of talking to people, eating some biscuits and stuff. Just remember that it doesn't matter how slow you're going, you are lapping everyone, including you, on the couch. Number one mistake writers make is confuse thinking with writing. Um, I've been writing this book for about five years and this book is, about, okay, just a little question. How many words have you written? Oh, um, no, actually, no, I mean, I've just, I haven't started writing, so it's just in your head. Yeah, well, that's not writing, that's thinking. That's fine, that's fine, it's good, it's, it's valuable. You're thinking about a book, that's great, but it's not writing. You have to shit or get off the pot. So if you are writing a book, write the damn book. Don't try to convince me that you're writing a book because you're thinking about it. People think, other people seeing them as a writer makes them appear bigger in people's eyes. So instead of saying, I'd like to write a book and I've got this idea, they sell it to you as though that they're actually writing it and they're just thinking about it. So if you really think you're writing this book, you're not, you're thinking. But if you're thinking about writing this book, start. Simple, small. Do what you can, where you are, with what you have. Thanks for joining me again today. There's a link in the comments to all my other online classes and to show you ways you can donate to my little cry for help because every time you spend a dollar, you are voting on how you want the world to be. Supported by the City of Melbourne COVID-19 Arts Grants.